Pruitt takes on sue and settle litigation, Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, head Scott Pruitt is cracking down on settlements with environmental groups. Pruitt rolled out a new policy Monday meant to add transparency and stakeholder input in the settlement process. He accused the Obama administration of using settlements on regulatory matters to collude with environmentalists and obligate the agency to write rules, thus thwarting the usual regulatory process. The days of regulation through litigation are over, Pruitt said in a statement. We will no longer go behind closed doors and use consent decrees and settlement agreements to resolve lawsuits filed against the agency by special interest groups where doing so would circumvent the regulatory process set forth by Congress, Pruitt said, adding that he is also cracking down on attorneys' fees paid to litigants. Under Pruitt's new directive, the agency will post all lawsuits online, reach out to affected states and industries, and seek their input on any potential settlements. The EPA is pledging to avoid settlements that would make for a rushed regulatory process or that obligate the agency to take actions that the federal courts do not have the authority to force. Any potential settlements would also be posted online, and the EPA will review any related comments, Pruitt's directive said. Some of the provisions in the new policy appear to be duplicative. For example, Federal agencies were already required to post proposed settlements before they are made final under the Clean Air Act and to accept public input about them. A 2014 Government Accountability Office report on settlements found that they only had a limited impact on agency regulations, and even then, it was only on the timing of rules. Republicans and industry had accused the Obama-era EPA of using lawsuits and their settlements to force regulations or other policies without following the usual regulatory process. The Heritage Foundation, which often criticized the obama EPA's actions, applauded the new policy. The EPA should be commended for going after the egregious sue-and-settle practice, Darren Baxt a research fellow at the conservative group, said in a statement. Federal regulation is supposed to be developed in an open manner with public participation. Instead, though, agencies such as the EPA have been engaging in closed-door deal-making with special interests, primarily environmental pressure groups, he said. Environmentalists characterized Pruitt's new policy as an attack on enforcement of environmental laws such as the Clean Air Act and Clean Water Act. Pruitt's doing nothing more than posturing about a non-existent problem in political fiction, said John Walkie, director of the Clean Air and Climate Program at the Natural Resources Defense Council. Read more here. Another conservative group objects to Perry Power Plan. Another conservative group has come out against the Energy Department's proposal to boost coal and nuclear power. An analyst for the American Action Forum, off, said the proposal announced this month, by Energy Secretary Rick Perry, aims to address a real problem with not the best solution. Philip Rossetti, an off-data analyst, said the plan does not promote a policy that would necessarily achieve a more stable electricity system and instead would arbitrarily value nuclear and coal power above their market rates. The only effect of the proposal is to set an arbitrary target of on-site fuel requirements that values coal or nuclear power, regardless of if those sources are able to provide resiliency and reliability at least cost, Rossetti's analysis says. Perry's proposal has run into headwinds since he unveiled it earlier this month. The Institute for Energy Research, an energy think tank whose political side endorsed Trump, last week called the plan excessive and unnecessarily distortive. Capitol Hill resistance crystallized last week when Perry testified before the House Energy and Commerce Committee. And Neil Chatterjee, the new Federal Energy Regulatory Commission chairman, told reporters last week that while he was sympathetic to the proposal's goals, he would not put in place any policy that would blow up competitive electricity markets or fail in court. Trump clears pipeline expansion. The Trump administration on Monday approved a proposed expansion of an oil sands pipeline that crosses the Canadian border. Enbridge Energy's Line 67, 
also known as the Alberta Clipper, now has State Department approval to nearly double its capacity at the crossing near Netch, North Dakota, to about 890,000 barrels per day. Line 67 serves a similar purpose to the highly controversial Keystone XL pipeline, and after the expansion, it would carry slightly more oil than Keystone. Environmentalists opposed to Line 67 have sought to tie it to Keystone. It carries oil sands petroleum, which is very energy intensive to refine, from Alberta's booming oil country to the United States pipeline system for refining. The Sierra Club slammed the approval, but pledged to keep fighting the project. Today's approval of a dirty tar sands project is far from a surprise, given the Trump administration's commitment to propping up the fossil fuel industry above all else, said Kelly Martin, director of the group's Beyond Dirty Fuels campaign. But the ultimate decision on this reckless expansion project won't be made in Washington, it will be made in Minnesota, and Minnesotans have made it clear that they do not want Enbridge running more dirty tar sands through their state. Read more here. On Tap Tuesday, Senator Tim Scott, RSE, and others are scheduled to address the American Association of Blacks in Energy. Join us Wednesday, October 25, as The Hill goes one-on-one -on -one with Dr. Ben Carson, Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, for a Newsmaker Series exclusive. We will discuss his agency's relief efforts in hurricane-affected areas, his priorities for the department and the growing need for affordable housing. RSVP here. Around the web, the federal government approved a plan to build a water pipeline in the Mojave Desert, the Desert Sun reports. Some in coal country worry a growing drilling industry poses a threat to waterways, West Virginia Public Broadcasting reports. Ophelia made landfall in Ireland as the country's worst storm in 50 years, the Irish Times reports. From the Hill's opinion page, former Senator Joe Lieberman, Khan, warns that the Senate's budget vote this week could set the stage for drilling in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. Michael Steele, the former chairman of the Republican National Committee, writes that he's worried about the unintended consequences of Elon Musk's offer to help rebuild Puerto Rico's electric grid.